Hello, my name is Tommy, and in this video, I'd like to talk about using the Pareto set as a technique for data analysis. This is something that's been useful for me on several occasions, but for some reason, I have a feeling that a lot of people don't know about this, so I thought I'd make a short video. Consider this very realistic example. You want to rent an apartment or buy a house or something, so you go online and you collect some data. Here I found 30 apartments and I want to know who should I call up, uh, which landlord should I call up and go have a look at the apartment. I assume now that the only thing that I know is price in square meters. I don't really know much else about these apartments and can I filter this down to a subset which is useful for me to, to look at and, and to call these landlords. Immediately, we should uh, notice that going to the upper left corner is bad. If we go up, the price increases. If we go to the left, the square meters are uh, less. So we'd like to stay away from the upper left corner. One technique that we could apply is scalarization. We compute a weighted sum of these features, square meters and price. We add a negative sign in front of square meters and we minimize this function. If we choose lambda equals 0 0.99 and we minimize, we find this apartment shown in the bottom right corner in orange. We could change lambda to 0 0.9 and we'd find a different apartment. This is an okay approach, but it has some disadvantages. The parameter lambda must be chosen beforehand and some interesting apartments, such as the one shown in black, will not be found by this approach. In higher dimensions, we have some trouble because we have to choose uh, a lot of value. There's more freedom in the lambdas, so we have to choose more values and we have to repeat this procedure many times. There is a better approach based on Pareto domination. So consider this apartment shown in black. There's no reason at all to consider any of the apartments uh, to the left uh, and above it because these are all both more expensive and have less square meters. So we can actually just remove all these apartments. In general, we say that the apartment shown in black dominated all the apartments that we just removed. And this reduces the data set to 18 apartments. We can repeat this procedure. We pick an apartment, look at which apartments are dominated by, by the new, new apartment and remove them. And this leaves us with the Pareto set. It consists of apartments that are not dominated by any other apartment. Now, this is really what you want to look at in this situation, because if you choose any of the blue apartments, then I can find a, an apartment in black that's both cheaper and has more square, me square meters than any apartment you just chose. So there's no reason at all to prefer any of the blue apartments given the knowledge that we have of square meters and price. If you Google this, you should know that there are a lot of synonyms for, for this concept. It's call, also called the Pareto front frontier. It's called the skyline in the database context, skyline query or skyline operator. And in the context of multi-objective optimization, it's called efficient solutions. I want to briefly look at some definitions very informally. If we have an apartment or a point in general, X, we say that X dominates Y if in all dimensions, x is at least as good as y. Another way of saying this is x is no worse than y in any dimension. And in at least one dimension, x is better than y. If we look at this figure now, uh, and this is a minimization problem, so going, uh, going to a lower value in x1 and x2 is better, the blue area would be dominated by the black dot x. And the orange area in the upper right corner are the points that would dominate X. The green area is interesting because it consists of, um, consists of uh, an area where points would be incomparable to X. So here's a simple example. If X dominates Y, we use the less than or equal to sign and we just, uh, it's curly typically. And clearly one, three, dominates 2, 5, 
in a minimization context, uh, though the points 1, 3 and 3, 1 are incomparable since neither one dominates the other. Let's quickly look at a different example of buying a computer. I don't know any anything about computers or computer brands, so my approach would be something like this. I'd collect some data, screen size, random access memory, storage capacity, weight, and price. Price is given in, uh, in region currency, so it might look a bit odd to you, but it doesn't really matter for this, uh, this type of problem. So if I want to minimize price and maximize RAM and hard drive size, I could write it like this using the Pareto set package in Python, which is a package that I've written for these kinds of computations. This would reduce the data set from 13 to three computers. I could also, for instance, add weight. And if I added weight, then the natural thing would be to minimize over weight. And this would reduce the data set from 13 computers to nine. Notice that Notice that one computer has a missing value for weight. In that case, you have to decide what to do about the missing value. You could set it equal to zero, which is what I did. You could remove it from the data set or whatever you want really, but you have to choose how to in interpret this missing value. So I hope you find it useful. If you'd like to play around with these kinds of computations, then I've written this package called Pareto set it's on the Python package index and it's open source. It's on GitHub, supports pandas data frames and numpy and dimensional arrays, supports minimization, maximization and a different uh, operator over any dimension. It can re return distinct or non-distinct solutions if you have uh, points that are exactly equal to one another and it can easily handle millions of rows. I've also implemented some other functions re related to Pareto sets, such as Pareto ranks, and you can read more about those concepts in the documentation if you'd like. I hope you found this video useful. I really think this is uh, extremely useful if you're doing any type of decision making, but you're unsure about how to weigh your preferences for various features. So whether you're a consumer buying a computer or you're helping a company make a decision or which project to initiate or which person to hire, this can be a really useful tool to use. So thanks a lot for watching. Hope you learned something. Goodbye.